So in my talk, I, I'm focusing on two recent studies that we published in PLOS Medicine. Um, uh, you know, it, it's, it's an exciting time. CTDNA MRD is revolutionizing solid tumor oncology, in my opinion. Um, uh, we, we've gotten some really exciting data in, in multiple disease sites. We're, we're seeing, uh, you know, data in the uh, clinical trial setting as well of the IM Digger 10 study, the secondary analysis of that that was published in Nature by Powell's and colleagues for, for muscle invasive bladder cancer. Some really exciting work. So I, I, I debated whether to do an, a broad overview of the field versus a deeper dive into some of the more uh, translational work in my laboratory. I decided on the latter. And the reason for that is that I think that in addition to just kind of the, the clear and obvious, you know, future applications for CTDNA MRDs, such as, you know, risk, you know, treatment response assessment, uh, you know, treatment adaptation, and the ability to utilize a predictive biomarker in the future to really personalize treatment. I felt that there are some other avenues that, that we should start thinking about going forward. And one of those is in the uh, realm of pediatric oncology. This idea that unfortunately some pediatric patients have hereditary disorders that put them at risk for cancer. And this idea that those patients while being at risk, there's a double-edged sword of not knowing how to exactly follow them because because CT imaging is, is in some cases contraindicated. One, because they're kids, and two, because sometimes the mutations themselves, there is an extra increased risk for a radiation-induced malignancy in some of these settings. So I wondered, could we apply a liquid biopsy in order to identify in the future pediatric malignancy early? And that, that's the first study that I dove into in my talk it's a study that we just published in PLOS Medicine, and we showed that we could use fragmentomics and low-pass whole genome sequencing to, to discriminate malignant peripheral nerve sheet tumor sarcoma in NF1 patients from NF1 patients who only have the benign precursor lesion. And that paves the way towards, in the future, being able to follow these patients and detecting the malignancy early. That, that's the first study that I talk about. And in the second study, I take another kind of a different approach to bladder cancer than, than what has been published in, in really elegant, nice, recent work with plasma cell free DNA assays. And I ask, can we just utilize a much more accessible bioanalyte? Can we just analyze urine? And we do that for patients with muscle invasive bladder cancer. And I show that after neoadjuvant chemotherapy, we can do an analysis of urine cell-free DNA and determine which patients respond very well to their neoadjuvant chemotherapy and which ones don't, and which ones in the future might, with this type of assay, be able to forego the significant morbidity of radical cystectomy, which is an extensive surgery that involves removal of the bladder as well as nearby organs. And it, it's, it's life-altering in terms of the quality of life. And so we felt that with our methodology, we might be able to pave the way to some patients having the option to undergo bladder sparing non-operative treatment through ultra sensitive, precise management with cell free DNA of the urine to determine who is responding well enough to their non-operative chemotherapy. 